not gonna put this in a video, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just sealed your fate, buddy. Oh no! <laughs> Hey guys, recently I've been trying to make a supersonic Nerf cannon, and it's surprisingly hard to get one of these little one gram foam darts to go supersonic. I got the idea after watching Giacco Whatever's video, where he claims he can get a Nerf dart going Mach 2. 0.351. Which is pretty amazing, if it's true. I set out to make my own Nerf gun even faster, so I needed to upgrade his design. He's using a solenoid valve, which is probably pretty fast, but not as fast as a burst disc is. He uses 400 psi air, and I'm going to be using 600 psi helium. I'm also going to be sucking all the air out of the barrel to create a vacuum on the inside of it. Otherwise, when the Nerf dart goes down the barrel, it encounters a lot of air resistance and steals some energy. Also, I know it's been a really long time since I last posted a video, because this video just took a ton of time and energy and resources to make, so I gotta say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and thank you to everybody else for sticking around. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you. Now it's time to start building that Nerf gun. I just got a lathe, and I'm excited because it'll allow me to build cool things that I haven't been able to before. But I'm still a little bit nervous about cutting threads. Fortunately, it's not as hard as I thought it was. Let me show you. First, you select the threads per inch you want to cut. Then you set the threading dial to any number, it doesn't really matter. Now all you gotta do is engage the feed mechanism, turn it on. Oh my god, it's on fire, how did that even happen? The rest of the build was pretty uneventful, so let's just skip ahead to the main attraction. This is the supersonic Nerf cannon. It has three main parts, pretty simple in design. You have the pressure chamber, barrel, and vacuum accumulator. And this is where you suck the vacuum from. Anyway, so the pressure chamber just screws on and off just like this. On the inside of the pressure chamber is where I put the burst discs. I cut a groove that holds an o-ring in there and keeps everything nice and airtight. The burst discs are just cut from projector overhead film, and I usually use about three of them to give a pressure of about 600 psi. Now getting up to 600 psi isn't easy, so we're gonna need a special pump. This is a special pump that I use to fill up my BB gun, and it can pump up to 4,500 psi, but it is very hard to do so. It's time to do some tests, and coincidentally my brother was in town so he came over and we spent all day testing out the Nerf gun. First we tried it with just air, and that got us about 1100 feet per second, which is pretty good, that was definitely supersonic crack. Then we tried it with air and a vacuum on the barrel, and that got us up to 1200 feet per second. 1200 feet per second is really fast, I mean we were able to punch through thin plywood with ease, we could blow up tomatoes, and even shattered glass with explosive results. And this one's particularly cool, I don't know what caused all those sparks, but it was pretty neat. I think it's because the Nerf dart is traveling so fast, the air in the orange nose cone of the Nerf dart gets compressed so much it just catches on fire or ignites the rubber for a brief millisecond or something like that. So naturally, we tried shooting it at lighters, but the flash is too brief for that. Unfortunately, 1200 feet per second isn't enough to punch through half-inch pine board, though. And also, I can't get the Nerf dart to go any faster than that, because if I just try to put more pressure in there, the Nerf dart just comes out as blue confetti. So I needed to figure out, how can I make my gun faster? And can I make my gun faster? Is there a limit to how fast you can push something? So I needed to answer that question, and I did a bunch of research online, I read a bunch of papers, emailed some college professors, and it turns out that projectile velocity is limited by how fast the gas that's pushing it can expand. Here's a graph that represents the speed the Nerf dart is traveling as it goes down the barrel. Say you launch it with 1000 psi. By the time the Nerf dart reaches Mach 1 in the propellant gas, the pressure behind it is only one-fifth of what it used to be. So say you had an infinitely large pressure chamber that was pumped up to 10,000 psi. As the Nerf dart travels down the barrel, the pressure behind it begins to fall off, even though the pressure in the chamber is unchanged. So theoretically, projectile speed is limited to five times the speed of sound, but in practice it's usually about half this. Eventually, the pressure behind the Nerf dart will be so low that the pressure pushing it will equal to the force of the friction resisting it going forward and you will have no more acceleration. Okay, one more thing, I promise. Some of you might be wondering, well, why don't you use a supersonic nozzle behind the Nerf dart to make it go faster, but this actually doesn't work. Turns out that a nozzle can only be used to accelerate a projectile up to 2.24 times the speed of sound in the driving gas. And the speed of sound in compressed air is barely higher than it is normally. Anyway, long story short, instead of heavy old air, we need to use the lighter gas, like helium. What? But why helium, you ask? Well, the speed of sound in helium is three times higher than the speed of sound in air, so the pressure behind the Nerf dart will stay higher for longer. Which brings us back to our Nerf dart. <sighs> that was a fun one. All right, now we've got a line of helium going right into the pump. I'd say that went through. Yeah. Well, awesome, now we got the Nerf dart going 1,500 feet per second, and it can blast right through a half-inch pine board. 
but unfortunately it's going so fast that at 1500 frames per second, my camera only captures one frame of it. We're gonna need a faster camera. Fortunately, I met Matt from iX Cameras and he's got a really amazing camera, like the flagship model. Yep, the uh, iSpeed 720. Yeah, and that, that is a very amazing camera, so we'll be able to see exactly what's going on with the Nerf Dart and uh, yeah, blow some Absolutely. stuff up with it. Let's see what you we know. get. All right, you guys ready? So does this just go once it's pumped up, it just blows? Yeah, once it bursts. Just... I can already see that it's like half the dart. So it's Explodes. So the problem with the Nerf dart is it keeps exploding into blue confetti out the other side of the barrel. The pressure just goes into the Nerf dart and shoots the orange cap right off. So we thought about reinforcing the Nerf dart. So this is what we thought. We wrapped the Nerf dart in some shipping tape, like the clear shipping packing tape, and then we put a earplug in the back of it. So that way the pressure will just hit the earplug and push it down the barrel instead of going into the dart and blowing the cap off of the dart. So hopefully this will survive long enough to do some damage to a tomato, which is our first target. 400. Andy found this about 10 feet away in the garage. Underneath the bench. <laughs> it's warm, but that's probably from the lights. Did you notice how warm it is? Oh yeah. The Nerf dart definitely went all the way through the tomato, but it was vaporized in the process. When we looked at the pieces of tomato afterwards, it was just covered in blue confetti from the Nerf dart. All right, now it's time for the ultimate challenge. Do you think it'll go through? It's gonna be a good, good fight. We're gonna try to shoot through this half-inch pine board. 600 psi. Woo! It went through. Dude, that was a lot of work. It was like 800 psi. Huh? <laughs> oh, holy cow! <laughs> so there's the entry. There's the exit, and it split the board right in half. No, that was, was oh. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! What the f That was a dart. That was a Nerf that dart. Was a Nerf and it went clear through the pine board and just left a perfect hole through it. Which is pretty amazing, half-inch pine board. So now what we're doing to prove this is going supersonic, we're using a technique called Schlieren Imaging, which basically lets you see disturbances in the air. So we have a mirror down there that's focused into the camera. I don't know if you can see the mirror because it's kind of dark yeah, back totally. there. But there's a point source light source here. There's a little tiny LED light that bounces over there and then you can see kind of the reflection of the LED. Can, it, can you see it? Yeah. So it goes there and it goes into the camera and it lets you see disturbances in the light. <laughs> Loud? Definitely supersonic because my ears are ringing. Yeah. First, I'll show you the subsonic Nerf dart. And you can just see it kind of goes through the air, and there's not really too much disturbance in the air. A little bit of stuff in front and the back of the Nerf dart, but let's try the supersonic Nerf dart. You can clearly see a shock wave in front of the Nerf dart, and that's just called a bow shock. And an interesting thing is you can tell how fast it's going by the angle of the shock wave coming off the front of the Nerf dart. Next, we're gonna be looking at my BB gun, which shoots subsonic. I try to keep it subsonic, but this one was an alloy pellet that was going almost or pretty much the speed of sound. And you can see that the waves coming off of it are a lot more rounded, they're not angular. This thing is traveling just at the speed of sound. Since we have this fancy setup, I thought we could try some other things. This is my golf ball cannon. My friend also tried clapping and yelling. We're gonna see, gonna see. We're gonna see the, the sound waves. Three, two, one. But it wasn't loud enough to see on the camera, so let's try something a little bit louder. This might blow up. Three, two, one. Hey, it didn't blow up. Nice. Nope, it didn't blow up. This was a mixture of nitrous oxide and propane, and you could see some shock diamonds right when it blew. I've also been curious how much gas escapes the propane torch when I light my golf ball cannon, and it's not as much as I thought at all. And of course, we had to try the giant capacitor blowing up a banana. Oh, that's satisfying. Thanks for coming out, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, thanks, thanks to iX Cameras for letting us use this super awesome high-speed camera. Yeah. Really helped us see what was going on with the Nerf darts as it came out, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure, and we can see we can see it go right through the wood, and then we could see the shockwave with the Schlieren imaging. Yeah. That was awesome, never done that before, and 
it was so cool. Thank you for seeing the unseen is always fun. Yeah, so. thank you at IX Cameras for contributing that to the video. Because if they never came down, this video probably wouldn't have even been out for another six months with no videos. So thanks for helping me get that video finally. Awesome. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, cool. See you later. See ya. Earlier in the video, I mentioned my partnership with Skillshare, and if you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community with over 17,000 classes and things like video editing, film production, app development, and all kinds of other business classes. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes taught by professionals in their fields so you can improve your skills and use them to unlock new opportunities doing the jobs you love. Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there. With an annual subscription, the fee comes down to less than $10 a month. I mean, come on, if you're gonna spend 20 bucks on this, you might as well spend $10 on this. Just because you got a cool skin doesn't make you a good player. Trust me, I know. And hey, you probably noticed my new logo and channel art. Well, a good logo is very important. It's pretty hard to do also, so why not learn from the best? Aaron Draplin has a series of design classes on Skillshare. Not only is it about logo design, the series will also help you learn the basics of the program. Plus, he's a pretty cool dude. Anyway, the first 1,000 people to click the link below gets two free months of Skillshare Premium. So click that link below. Thanks for watching The Backyard Scientist. I love you guys. See you next time. Bork.